thought I'd share with you what I'm working on here today. This is the um, top part of the compression stack that goes in my KTM's WP AER 48 millimeter uh, suspension on the damping side. And if you uh, think about it here, this this top view is your compression clicker. So as you turn this clicker here, that operates um, this mechanism to control the, uh, the amount of fluid that flows through. This part here, I really, it wasn't necessary for me to take this entire stack apart. And um, when they do a revalve, they're only going to be disassembling this bottom uh, portion here. However, if you ask my parents, I will take apart anything all the way down to the bare uh, metal pretty much just to see and understand what it, uh, how it works on the inside. So, uh, without further ado, I went ahead and took this apart and the most difficult part about it was cleaning up all the uh, Loctite off of the threads so that I can get this back together uh, properly and get it to seal correctly and luckily I uh, If you watched and laughed at the video I made the one time on Loctite, I feel pretty confident in uh, The characteristics of this 263 here to be able to hold all this when I get it back together Anyway, let me get down to the bottom of this here. So when they do a revalve this this is where um, your valving is. These are the shim, shims in here. And this actually comes in from the bottom of the, the uh, uh, WP fork. There's your rebound clicker on this side. And it goes all the way up through this rod. Um, but I, really I'm focusing on this one right now. If we pull this nut off the bottom. You have to be really careful when uh, pulling the shim stack off because it's a very very delicate set of washers and um, you could really easily make a mess out of everything there they are right there uh, and go ahead and pull that off and see if I take this Off here you can see the series of washers as they progressively get larger in diameter and this is the first time I've taken a suspension apart so by no means am I anywhere near uh, a person who knows fully what he's talking about um, but I'll put that back on here and sit this here for now actually it goes on the other side but I'll get this out of the way. And uh, next here I'll show you what this, how this works from the inside here. This actually has a set of seals on it that I, I've had off for now. Put this over here. So this is the, is the uh, top out spring, I believe. Um, I really don't have directions uh, for this because my trusty KTM service manual doesn't include all these steps because this is actually one uh, component here that you order. It's cost about 250 bucks. So the risk that I took in taking this apart was that I was going to be spending $250 to get it back together again. But I feel pretty confident so far. Um, I was kind of worried at first because I was concerned there was, there was going to be some left-handed threads in there and then I'd crank it off the wrong way. But we did alright. Okay, so this is a, a detent style uh, clicker here with little ball, ball bearings on the inside of it. And those suckers will fall out on the floor. So I gotta be careful with that. 
and that is just like a tip of a screwdriver and it um, actually will thread this needle up and down inside the uh, this tube here. You can see this is a needle and the further that goes down the more it will enter into this hole and block off fluid from uh, going through that hole and in and out the uh, the sides here or maybe it's the other way around I guess it's back and forth uh, you would have fluid transfer back and forth in and out of there um, so I'll pull this this guy out fully here and like I said the uh, uh, Taking this apart, the hard part was cleaning up all of these threads. Uh, I've, I've spent hours out here doing that, and when they do your revalve, they're not going to tear this apart. And I know for those watching me out there that do take uh, do revalves, you're probably laughing at me for taking this apart. But hey, that's how I learn. So there's your needle right there. So that guy just kind of seats in there. Kind of reminds me of a, a carburetor jet or something. A pitot tube. That's, that's kind of how, how it works on the inside and the basics. Um, if I pull this off here. All right, I wanted to show regarding this, uh, this Loctite. Here we go. 263. This is, is about as close as you can get to the Loctite 2701 that KTM mentions all over their manuals. Uh, uh, according to Hinkle Corporation, which I actually talked to on the phone. And if we look at that Loctite over here, I've got the uh, safety or actually the technical data sheet up and really the the um, things that I was concerned about for one is the cure time because you can't just put the thread locker on there and throw it in oil right away and expect everything to work and expect that thread locker to hold up uh, quite the same uh, this one actually has a cure time of about uh, right around between an hour to well it depends on what the material is um, for steel for example it's almost fully cured in about an hour and a half uh, but then you have other metals such as brass and and uh, 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 stainless steel that uh, uh, take uh, different cure times. Um, so, for example, stainless steel it takes about three hours. Uh, so does zinc dichromate. So basically, a chromated metal. It actually takes longer to cure. Um, and that's another thing about this Loctite here is it's good with chromated metals. And I'm not. I don't know much about chemistry or um, metallurgy, but I'm certain that some of these metals are probably uh, got some kind of coating on here. I don't, I don't know what this is. Um, it's beyond my pay grade. But I think I can be dangerous enough to, to, um, to get this back together. I've, I've uh, learned a lot in the process and this particular Loctite, I think, is going to hold everything back together. And I'm going to have to do the same here for the, the cartridge I took apart. I'll have to clean up all these threads, make sure everything's clean. And uh, I've even got special Loctite uh, cleaner that they recommend that you use to make sure everything seals properly. And I've got two. I've got a, uh, a primer that you can use. This actually changes the cure time. Um, but the problem with it is if you use the primer, then you'll actually decrease the strength of it. So I'm looking at a chart here 
uh, tested according to a specific ISO standard uh, that if I use this 7088, um, it will decrease the strength, percent of strength on steel by um, 40%. So it's only 60% as strong as it would be if you didn't use the primer. But, you know, there are certain situations where uh, if you seal something and you need to, to uh, immerse it into a fluid rather quickly, I suppose the, the primer would, would be good for that. There's a lot of other cases too, but I'm just going to be patient and let it dry. All right, well, I've learned a lot. Um, Still learning. Hopefully I won't die on these uh, forks when I finally do get a chance to ride again. Take care.